Hey. Hey. So what you working on, Bam? Oh, I was just trying to unbox it. All right, wh whatever. I'm going to need you to work on a Susano statue. Uh, Susano statue? I don't have... No, 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 no. I don't want to hear excuses. But, but I don't have one. All right, problem solved. Now get to it, you filthy animal. Hey everybody, Boss Bam here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. Would you get out of here? Today we're going to be unboxing none other than an Itachi Complete Form Susano. You mean Susano? Bruh. Get out of here. This is made by none other than SXG Studio, a studio that has been around for a very long time since the early inception of Naruto resin statues. On the very front nameplate, my guess is it says Itachi Uchiha. I'm, I'm sure you know somebody can confirm that for me, but that's my guess as to what it would say. And the base is themed around really the Susano coming to life. We have all this bits of chakra forming everywhere. It kind of looks like fire all around and a lot, a lot of heavy clear resin went into this. Seriously though, SXG, you gotta calm down, man. These bases, I swear, they weigh about 40 to 50 pounds alone. Amidst all the clear resin, there is a few important parts to point out. On the left side where my finger is, is a magnet inside with a little notch. This is a fiery pillar that will later support the leg of the Susano. Very, very important. And there's a few other grooves mixed all throughout, but those are the two major points to point out. For those of you scratching your head thinking, well, wait a minute, Itachi did not have a complete form Susano. This was a form that debuted, I believe it was in Naruto Ninja Storm 4. I played most of the games, but they all kind of blend together throughout the years. But what we're taking a look at here is a representation of the Yatamir. It connects itself with that steel rod and that notch, and it'll go on to a groove on there. But very cool that they had this representation. I don't believe that was really a part of his complete form in the game, but nice cool effect piece is going to be on the side. I'm not sure exactly why this rock was sculpted separately, but it was, and here's what it looks like. With that attached, we'll take a look at what is most of the Susano's body. There were a few parts that were sculpted separately. We'll go through those a little bit later. But starting from the bottom up, we have the point of contact in which it will attach to the base. And there's not too much texturing going on with this resin. It's pretty much smooth all around. But the paint application on, this because this resin actually started off as clear, all clear. And then they painted on some red, some oranges and yellows, and they blended to bring out some of the details you see here in the sculpt. This hand was sculpted with a hole so you can tell it will be holding something. Just like Top Studio Sasuke, you'll see there are some magnets that will be poking out. Uh, they're not too visible, but I will point them out. They are a bit of an eyesore when you do catch them, but they are very important for holding in various parts and making sure that they attach without falling off. You can tell by the pose of this thing though, he is in a very dynamic pose. You're gonna see not a static standing there. He is ready to thrust into battle and just looks incredible. Like I'd said before, the only point of contact is that steel rod and joint there that fits into the notch. And in order to support this, that kneecap does have to rest on that fire pillar. Very important or he'd probably bend over time or warp. Next up, we have some fiery effect pieces that were sculpted separately that we're gonna be taking a look at too. The first one has this notch with the rectangular magnet on the end that allows it to attach to the base and it kind of floats there freely and looking like it's coming directly from the sword that we'll see later. The second is very similar to the first. The only difference is the way that it connects to the statue is gonna be with this steel rod and joint that's actually gonna go in the back instead of that rectangular magnet that the first one had. One of the things I do like about these effect pieces is it does help to create a more well-rounded and balanced looking statue. Up next, we'll be taking a look at the wings. There were two that were sculpted separately, but as one giant piece. Now they did a great job at adding all the Susano texturing that goes into the wings typically. They almost look like you know, roofing tiles, you know, when they're all put together, but uh, you have the fiery tips as well that outline around the outside. The steel rod to the right was actually casted inside of the resin and that helps it attach itself to the base. 
The second wing is very similar to the first. I will say that there's two ways that this actually connects. So first off, the steel rod is going to go into the base and it does keep it safe, secure. And at the very top, there's a notch that goes into the back top part of the Susano. The back angle on this looks incredible, and you'll see there is a steel rod to the left and a steel rod over here to the right, and those two notches fit up there up top, and friction holds it into place. The rest of the parts of the Susano were sculpted separately. We have the right hand, or I guess the left hand here, which is in an open stance. We have that magnet in the back, which will attach to the magnet that was impacted on the statue in the wrist. Here we have the arm guards, or the pieces of armor that were also sculpted separately. These notches are in two different shapes. One's more square, and the other's more rectangular, so it helps you to know which one is which left from right. And most importantly, we have the head, which is one of the most unique looking, complete form Susano heads, I think. And I love how this looks. Again, this is something that we only got to see in the game, never in the show. Could you even imagine what it would look like if we actually saw Itachi reach this form in the show? I mean, he was basically indestructible as it was, you know, with his armored version. So this thing is crazy to even think about actually being in the Shinobi world. Lastly, we have the sword, which goes into the hand where the hole was. And this is the sword. It's actually huge. I can hold this with my own hands. And it's a standard looking long sword. And it has some fire going all around it. And if we go all the way towards the bottom here, we will see there's a steel rod in the handle. Now that's very important. That's gonna help again to make sure that the resin doesn't bend or warp over time. Because sometimes resin, when you put enough weight on top of it, it can cause it to warp. And so they reinforced it great. And the sword looks fantastic, especially the paint job all throughout from bottom to top with the orange, yellow, and red. For those of you asking, I did get this statue from GAC Games Animation Collectibles. I will share that the owner of the store gave me a special code, BAM Collectibles 30, where you can get $30 in SGD off of an order. Now, this is only up for the first 100 customers that grab it, but check out their site. Awesome. Naruto statues, many other franchises are also represented there. Uh, here's me kind of briefly scrolling through their website so you can take a look at it. Links will be in the description. We can check it out for yourself. Amazing statue for sure. So far, my only complaint is there's a lot of orange that's kind of bleeding together. There's not a lot of parts that are allowing it to distinguish itself uh, from others. And so the fire at the bottom and the Susan up top looks very similar. Now, right here, we have the electric or the AC adapter that's going to power the LEDs. And uh, let's take a look and then we'll talk afterwards how it looks turned on. All right, now LEDs have a way of changing a whole statue. So you can see here, it's taking on a whole new character with these on. Now it doesn't separate the Susano from the base as much as I'd like, but just enough with that bright orange coming through the bottom. And to put the cherry on the icing of the cake, we have one of the best Itachi Uchiha sculpts that I've ever seen for a statue. One thing I loved about Itachi is he was never extremely flashy, right? Just his presence alone gave a sense of uneasiness whenever he was on screen. And later to find out all the different powers and abilities that he has makes him that much more terrifying. Again, the pose and paint job that SXG chose for this statue just completely blows me away. I love it. It's perfect. It captures him uh, both in the character design and if we take a look at the head sculpt as well, everything's great. I have no complaints at all. Turning him around to the back, we do have his ponytail that was sculpted separately. For some reason, it doesn't go in all the way, I believe. Uh, maybe I'm not pushing it in hard enough. I'm scared to put too much force in there for the chance of potentially breaking that, but that's as far as I'm going to put it in here for now. My friend loved the pose of this Satoshi so much that he was actually able to contact the studio and get one uniquely made. And he actually pairs it with his Surge Studio Itachi, which I thought was brilliant.
it would not be an Itachi statue without adding some crows in there. Now, what do you think? It, was it perfect before? Is it overkill to add some details like this? I think it is gonna help to take away from the orange that we'll see, you know, all throughout the base and the Susanoo coming in. Now, all these different crows attach in different ways. Some of them have mini steel rods. Some of them have notches. Now, this one over here, you'll see is squared out because that's gonna rest in to the base using just friction. Quick reminder, if you've enjoyed this video so far, do me a favor, do hit a like, and feel free to always leave a comment. I try to engage with everybody as much as I can, and so I'd love to talk with you down there, and I uh, hope you're enjoying everything so far. This will wrap up everything for the crows, and we'll get these installed onto the statue. Man, those crows did an excellent job at just enhancing the overall look of this statue. Taking a step back, this is the complete statue, and we will dim the lights to see how it looks. Absolutely breathtaking. No matter how many statues I review of the Uchiha's or the Susanoo's, they continuously blow my mind and SXG has done it again. Well, everybody, this wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do enjoy statue unboxing videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button notification bell so you do not miss out. And as always, everybody, I will see you in the next video. Do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.